Hi all, Retro Tech Chris here again. Recently, I decided I wanted to buy a new GoTech, and I was looking for one with a rotary dial and OLED display. And I found this listing on eBay, which I found to be very impressive. And furthermore, as I read on, I saw that this GoTech was also modified to have a speaker for floppy sounds. And this particular GoTech was put together by none other than Retro Friends who has a great YouTube channel with a great playlist dedicated to the GoTech. If you need any information about how to program your GoTech, be it an older model or a newer model, this is the place to go. So here is the front of the GoTech with its nice OLED display, USB input, forward and back buttons, and rotary dial. Turning to the side, we can see that the overall profile is a little bit shorter than a floppy drive, and you can see that rotary knob sticking out on the far left. And on the back, we can see connectivity for a floppy cable, for power, as well as some jumper settings. And on the far left, also some places where you can short together certain pins if you want to program your GoTech using a USB-A to USB-A cable. Once again, more information about that on Retro Friends YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and take this apart. There's just three screws to undo here. And once we do that, we can lift the top off and have a look at the inside of the GoTech. And there it is. And you'll notice that in the center is this artery chip. It's this particular chip which made the difference between the older style GoTechs and the newer style. So this is indeed a newer style GoTech. Looking at the installation, since this will be going into an IBM PC, the first thing we need to do is move a jumper. So here you can see me moving the jumper from the S0 block to the S1 block to ensure this will work properly in an IBM PC. And from there, we'll start the install process in my Pentium 233 MMX system. Here you see me popping off the front cover and popping out one of the slot covers so that we can put the GoTech into the system. I'm going to add it to the system and leave the existing floppy drive in the system. So we can go ahead and slide it into place, putting it into this cage, in hindsight, I should have just removed the cage, but oh well, you'll see why in a minute. We've got it nice and aligned. From there, we can go ahead and take the back case off so that we can get in and make the other connections as well as see what else we need to do. So three screws and we can remove the top cover from this particular beautiful and light case that I have here and turn the machine around. From here, I'll go ahead and put in two screws to secure the GoTech and quickly realize that I have to remove the cage anyway to get to the other two screws. So let's go ahead and pull that cage out. This is what I should have done in the first place, but oh well. And then from there, we can go ahead and put those two screws on the other side, as you see me doing here. And then from there, we can go ahead and pop this cage back into the case, as you will see me do here in just a moment. There it is, going back into the case. Now we can put the front cover on. Good to go on that front. So turning our attention to the inside of the machine, I do need this power adapter that you see here since I don't have enough smaller Molex connectors in the system. We'll go ahead and hook power into the floppy drive and the GoTech, and then hook the floppy cable into the floppy drive as well as into the GoTech. With everything connected, let's go ahead and power the machine on. Take a particular listen as the machine boots. You'll hear drive A seek, and then you'll hear that nice simulated sound coming from the GoTech. So now let's take a look at the GoTech powered up. The first thing you will see is that the GoTech is running Flash Floppy version 3.29 as indicated by the OLED display on the left. So since I already had a USB stick that I had repaired with images, since I had a GoTech in the past, I went ahead and put this into the GoTech. And something strange happened. Look at the display on the left. It's now completely flipped upside down. There is a configuration file on this USB stick, and some configuration settings must be causing us some problems. So I went searching online, and this is what I found. It looks like we need to add one setting to the ff.cfg file that lives on my USB drive so that the display type can be rotated. I made that change, inserted the stick, and now everything is right with the world. 
we no longer have to read upside down. Here you can see me going through some of the different images that exist on the USB stick. I love this rotary dial and nice OLED display. And here you can see the actual contents of the USB stick when I put it into a drive on a modern computer. Next, we'll go ahead and do a track seek on the drive, and you'll notice that next to that T colon, that 00.0, .0 will change. The 00, 0 indicate the track, and the dot zero indicates either head zero or head one. Next up, let's look at some of the rotary options. By pressing the rotary dial in, we have different options that you can see here, including working with images as well as changing other things like write protect. Kind of cool. Also, in addition to using the dial, we can use these buttons to go back and forth between images. That's the way that older style GoTex worked. And next, I'll show you that we can copy and paste an image, basically by going to it and selecting it and pressing the rotary dial in on copy, and then pressing it again on paste. And then we'll notice that as I turn the dial, we have an underscore 000 version of that particular disk image on the USB stick. Next, we're going to perform a disk copy, and what you'll notice is the tracks increase sequentially on the GoTech, and the head alternates between zero and one, as we copy the disk in drive A to the GoTech that resides at drive B. So all in all, I find this GoTech to be most impressive. I love Flash Floppy that is loaded on it, and this definitely gets my seal of approval.